Hi and welcome back to another Mr. Talbot Maths video and in this week's video we've got this problem here which is all about finding out the yellow area of this uh, basically quarter circle. Now we don't know the radius but what we do know is that there's two chords that join up with the kind of corners of the quarter circle and they meet at this point of circumference. One has a length of one and the other has a length of root two and that's all the information we got. So first thing to do is label the vertices. Now, if you want to have a go at this problem yourself, pause the video now and see if you can solve it for yourself. Now, to be honest, I found this quite a tricky problem at, at first. I couldn't figure out how to go about it. I was trying various different methods, um, but I, I couldn't figure out or couldn't find the method for, or my method at least, for uh, you know a, a good while, let's say. So without further ado, I'm going to show you my solution and then you can see if we get the same answer and if you were able to find a different solution. Okay, so first thing that I did was label uh, the uh, radius R um, and then the next thing I did is I put another radius on because again if you watch the channel um, you know anything to do with circles or just if you don't watch the channel you might know this anyway but anything to do with circles put your radius on there any uh, additional radii that may be useful to you in the question and this one um, did end up being useful but this was one of the, the things that I did straight away because I know that quite often this is very helpful. So then what I wanted to do is work out some angles because basically if I can work out some angles that will enable me to work out some sides and then hopefully get the radius from that. So I called these alpha and beta respect, respect, res, respectfully, res, respectfully, that's, 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 that's the one, right way to say it. Um, and then we've got two isosceles triangles here, both with uh, side lengths, or both with two side lengths of R. And then I worked out that both of these angles had to be 90 minus alpha divided by two and 90 minus beta divided by two, respectfully. And the reason that is, is because I've got 180 degrees in a triangle, I take away alpha from it, and then I split that into two because it's isosceles. So 180 split into two is 90, alpha split into two is alpha over two. And it's exactly the same logic for the other angle. Now, <clears throat> I want to work out what those two angles are combined, but what I do know, first of all, is that the angle BAD is equal to alpha plus beta, which is equal to 90, because it's a right angle. Right, so alpha, sorry, angle BCD, sorry, is 90 minus alpha over 2 plus 90 minus beta over 2. That's angle BCD. If I simplify that, I get 180 minus alpha over two minus beta over two. And you might know, or you might see, that I can factorize this to 180 minus a half brackets alpha plus beta. I can substitute the first equation into that. So where I see alpha plus beta, I can change that to 90. Substitute in my 90, minus a half of 90, half of 90 is 45. 180 take away 45 is 135. Now. I'm now going to tidy everything up just to give us a, a clean slate again with that information and see what we can do with that. So we've now got 135 is this angle. Now the other line that I wanted to put in, specifically because we've got this right angle here, is one with Pythagoras. So I drew this line because I know I can use my Pythagoras with it. But not only that, I know that I can use something else with it, which I'm going to get onto very shortly. So using Pythagoras... The length of that line has to be the square root of r squared plus r squared. And that gives me the square root of 2r squared if we simplify it. <clears throat> so that's the length of that line here. Now, I could simplify that slightly more, but I'm not going to at this point because for my next step, you're going to see that uh, I actually don't need to simplify any further. And it's actually going to make things slightly more complicated if I do simplify that a little bit further. So next thing, I've got three sides of a triangle and I've got one angle. Cosine rule. This is the cosine rule. I'm going to substitute uh, my values into that. Now, I just want to explain quickly what these things are. Now, B and C, um, they are interchangeable. But A, the capital A and the lowercase a, have to be specific things. So, all of lowercase a, b and c are sides. But lowercase a has to be opposite the angle which we are going to have as capital A because obviously you can't put a side length into a trig function like cos, that won't work. So 
that capital A has to be the angle, and then opposite that is going to be our lowercase a. So substituting into that, we have the square root of 2r squared, which is a, and that's going to be squared is equal to b squared, which is 1 or root 2, doesn't matter, uh, plus root 2 squared minus b, sorry, 2 times b times c, so 2 times 1 times root 2, times by cos of the angle, which is 135. We're going to simplify that, simplify the squared parts at least, so we get 2r squared um, is equal to 1 plus 2 minus 2 root 2 cos 135. We're going to calculate cos 135 is negative root 2 over 2, and we've now got to, to multiply that by minus 2 root 2 again, and I simplified the 1 plus 2 to 3. I'm going to cancel the root 2s um, and the 2 and over 2. So 2 root 2 or negative 2 root 2 times negative root 2 over 2 will give you 2 or positive 2 to be specific. And so we've got 2r squared is equal to 3 plus 2. Gives us 2r squared is equal to 5. Value for r therefore divide by 2 and square root is r is equal to the square root of 5 over 2. Now, I probably could have left that as r squared because we're going to see in a second I need r squared rather than r. But either way, that's fine and that will work. So again, we're going to tidy up everything here and replace the r with root 5 over 2. We're going to get rid of everything else because we don't need anything else on the diagram apart from obviously uh, <clears throat> the a, b, c and d. Okay, so we've got this and now we can work out the yellow area because it's a quarter of a circle and we've got the radius. So the area circle is pi r squared. Everyone should know that, I hope, if you're watching this video. So we are going to do a quarter of a circle, which you can write as a quarter, or I'm going to write as 90 over 360 times pi times by radius, which is root 5 over 2. Again, all squared. Simplifying that, we are going to get pi over 4, 90 over 360 will simplify to a quarter, times pi, and then root 5 over 2 squared is just 5 over 2 timesing those two things together and our final answer is 5 pi over 8 units squared and if you want it as a decimal 1.963 units squared three decimal places okay i hope you enjoyed that video and i hope you were able to get the solution as well if you found a different method please put it down in the comments below because it's always interesting to read those different methods and also for you to share with everybody else who's watching the video so they can see, you know, maybe you've got the same method as them or maybe you tried that same method and you went slightly wrong or they did, vice versa, and so you can help to, to correct each other. Okay, like I say, I hope you enjoyed that video and I will see you next week, next Monday at 5pm for another problem-solving video. Till then, bye-bye.